Hello and welcome to the broadcast of Deep Cough in the Deep. I'm your host, Jeremy Lopez, and today I'm excited that you have joined us on this video, and I hope you're doing great today, no matter where you are right now. If it is your morning, your noon, or your night, you know what? I hope that you are watching this with great expectation, great anticipation, knowing that your life is about to be changed. Let's, let's, let's think, face reality for a moment. How many of us watch broadcasts? We watch television, we read, we, we listen to, to the Word, we, we do so many different things. Why? Because each one of us that are listening right now, we want our lives to improve, do we not? We want to do better in our lives. We want to be something that we previously were not. You know, we want to accomplish something that maybe beforehand we didn't get a chance to do. And maybe, just maybe, somewhere in the depths of your spirit, you feel a little down, or maybe you've been going through a hard situation, and so you tuned into the broadcast because you want to feel better. You want to know that God loves you. You want to know that there's a Savior who loves you, redeemed you, sanctified you, cleansed you, and and lifted you on high, did you not? So I'm glad you, you are with us today and welcome to our broadcast again. Well, by the way, today what I want to talk to you about basically is lifting up your countenance because I believe so many of you right now because of economic crisis, because of what's going on with government. I mean, my goodness, we just went through a government shutdown, did we not? And yet, it's back up and running now. But through all of this, it's that, uh, that, that instability we see, is it not, in creation. We're seeing such an instability of not really understanding what actually is stable, what actually is something that I can put my foot upon because everything around me seems as if it's sinking sand. Everything is just, it's just as if it's, it's drowning in despair. I don't want to go down with it, do you? And guess what? We're not. Because we've come to the place in our lives where we are sons of the Almighty God. And knowing that we are sons of the Almighty God, that means we have a little bit of favor, do we not? We have a lot of favor. We have a God who loves us, who promises us by Psalm 91 through thousands of scriptures in the Bible and the Word of God that there's help for us, that He is our ever-present help in time of trouble, that there is hope and a bright future. There's something beyond the edge of where we presently are in our lives. And the good thing about God is that there is always an exit door, is there not? There's always uh, the exit door that enters into another door of, of brightness, of, of hope, of grace, of mercy, of forgiveness. And that's what I want to talk to you about for a couple of minutes today. Today in this broadcast is lifting up your countenance. And I want to read today from the book of Isaiah, chapter 60. So Isaiah chapter 60 says this, and we're going to start in verse, let's start in verse 2. It says, See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the people. This is an IV. And it goes on to say, But the Lord rises upon you. Isn't that great to know that even though there's gross darkness around us, the Lord begins to shift and begins to make that paradigm shift, not just naturally, but the paradigm shift even within our subconscious way of thinking that says, look, maybe gross darkness might be out here, but it's also maybe here. And sometimes we feel that here, do we not? Sometimes when the world uh, comes upon us and we begin to sort of uh, listen and begin to heed to and begin to maybe see all the despair and, and devastation around us, it begins to get here does it not? And when it affects here, guess what it affects? It affects here, our heart. And so sometimes in our lives it begins to come and affect our brain and our mind and our thoughts and all of a sudden that which was joyful and, and hopeful and, and the thoughts that produces great things and I begin to you know, see the fruit from, from all these positive ways of me thinking about God's Word and all of a sudden, bam, there it is. My mind begins to go there. My mind begins to go to that dark place of maybe there really isn't hope. Maybe, the, maybe it's true. Maybe there's not really something to look forward to. Maybe this is all that there is in my life. But isn't it great to know that even God in His Word says that even though there's darkness and gross darkness that covers the earth during that time period, He says, but, and we've heard that before, there's always a great thing with but, is there not? But the Lord rises upon you. And so no matter what you're in right now, there's a but there. But God says, but the Lord rises upon you. And it goes on to say in verse 3, it says, nations will come to your light. I love this. And kings to the brightness of your dawn. Guess what? There is a dawn within the midst of who you are. In your existence, in your beingness, knowing that you are spirit, having a human experience here, guess what? There is a dawning of the brightness of the God's coming within inside of you right now. And I believe God sends people, kings from afar, friends from afar, people from afar, mentors from afar, maybe somebody you just came across in the grocery store, but God sees to it that He will send you somebody that will be 
begin to ignite that brightness of His coming inside of you. You know, the Bible says that Jesus is the light that lighteth every man which means there's a light inside of humanity. And isn't it good to know that all we need is just some son of God to walk by us, some daughter of God to walk by us, and just begin to talk ourselves happy, maybe encourage us, exhort us, comfort us. And what they're doing is they're, they're being wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove by, by beginning to put the spark back into your life, back into that, that, dawn, that dawn of that brightness of God's coming that's inside of you. They begin to, begin to pull that out to the surface. And this is what the Scripture says. It says, Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. It goes on to say, Lift up your eyes and look about you. I like this. Look up your eyes and look about you. In other words, you've been looking down too long. It's time for you to look up. You know what I do in my life when I find that there's something there that just seems as if, you know what, I'm sitting here looking this way and all of a sudden all I see is just, uh, man, there's a bad bad report there. Man, I didn't get that job that I was supposed to get. You know, uh, man, my best friend went through divorce or, wow, you know what, my partner left me and, oh man, she walked out on me and, you know, he walked out on me and, oh man, look what's going on now. Ah, I just I didn't get that raise I was promised. But you know what? When you look this way, guess what? All you're going to see is what's eye level. And what's eye level will never give you hope and a bright future. It'll never truly give you the promises that God says are yes and amen. It will truly never give you that joy, that unspeakable joy and full of glory. Because that's why the Bible says what? No, no man after the flesh. No one by the Spirit. In other words, when you see the flesh this way, that's all you're going to be, that's all you're going to view is flesh, limitations. You know, uh, you're going to behold their limitations of their do's and don'ts. And guess what happens when the Bible says, look, don't go by what you, what you see or feel. And it's time when we look this way, we're going to go by what we see and what we're feeling, do we not? But God says in His Word, He says, but lift up your eyes and look about you. In other words, look up in the heavens, look up bright, look up far. How many know that in the night time when you look up you see stars, distant stars? Some of them are still shining millions of, of light years away. And other ones that you view, guess what? They, their light went out thousands of years ago, hundreds of years ago, but you are still seeing that light begin to be projected to us as that light makes its way towards earth. You're still viewing that light. Isn't it good to know that even when something dies, you're still seeing the light of its pre-existence? Are, are you not? And you know what? When we look up, we see the brightness of those stars that stand above us, that sit among us. And even those who have died, guess what? They're still shining bright. And guess what God is saying to you today? You've got to realize you're like one of those stars in the heavens. And even though it seems as if something has died in you, and maybe something that, that just maybe you're, you've lit your, you put your light under that bushel, and maybe you just feel as if I there's no light in me, there's no hope in me. But guess what? There's, you're still shining to somebody out there. Because they're remembering the day in which you did something good for them. They're still remembering because they know that they're not going by the surface of what you feel and what you see. And you feel as if you're dead and you feel as if there's no good works coming out of you. They're looking beyond that physical form in which you feel as if it's truly you. They're looking beyond that limitation of who you are. And they're going in depth. They're going in, in, in the deep of your spirit because they still see the light of what you are, who you are, and what you're becoming and what you've done, what you're going to continue to do. And so today, I want to tell you right now, as the Scripture, let's read it again. Verse 4, Lift up your eyes and look about you. I want to encourage you today, it's time for you to lift your eye today. Lift your eye right now and look at the stars in the heavens and realize you are like one of those stars. You're shining bright. The brilliance of the glory of God is still shining out of you. So you know what? It doesn't matter what you see or what you feel. It doesn't matter that you get, didn't get that job. It doesn't matter. God promises you a better one. You know, I think sometimes in our lives when we say, man, I bind the devil. Look what the devil's doing to me. Look what he's, you know, he didn't cause me to get that job. I knew God had me to get that job. What if it was God that caused you not to get that job? What if it was God who knows the ending from the beginning, who knows there's a better brightness coming after this little candle that's lit that you call this job that you so desperately thought was God? What if beyond this little candle that's lit comes this huge, vast brightness of this lamp that is just so bright in, in, in the brilliance of His light? What if God sees there's a brighter light, there's a better hope for you, there's a better job for you? What if it's God? 
You know what I've realized in my life before I'm so quick to bind the devil? I begin to look around and say, He who began a good work in me, which is God, if that's Him, if He's began a good work in me, He is more than able to finish it and complete it. And the Bible says, you know what, where my foot shall trod, God's given it to me. I love what the Scripture says when it says that where my foot trod, the Bible says, guess what? It says, your feet are ordered by the Lord. So, can I tell you something today? We've got to get past all of this, the devil fighting God mentality. Let's face reality. God is the victor. God always has been the victor. God is. He is not even anything. He's, God is not even a victor. God is not even a, 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 a loser. God is nothing. God just is. His isness speaks of his majestic royalty that just is. He's not becoming a champion. He's always been. In fact, there's not really anything for him to be a champion over. God just is supreme. And when you know that God just is, you just begin to rest in the comfort of the high tower of God that you need to run into and find the shelter and the safety to know, God, you just are. And I thank you, God, today that you, you just are. And your isness is what I run into today. God is. And when you know that and you have a guarantee in your spirit that that's how God is because that's, that's who God is that we serve, then you begin to understand the concept that it doesn't matter what I see or feel. God already is. And knowing that God is, God is not going to become a champion. God is not going to win the battle for me. God is. There's nothing to win, folks. God is. He's always been in His isness. He's always been the warrior. He's always been the champion. He's always been God. And when you know that God just is God, guess what happens? Everything else tends to pass away. And guess what? For me, I realize there's nothing new under the sun. Therefore, guess what? God already has are, and always will and always will become the warrior in my life. He always will be the champion to me because He always has been that. So today, rest in that promise of God and lift up your eyes and see yourself shining like the stars in the heaven. And when you feel a little down about what's going on with you, just laugh it off and say, hey, I don't have to fight some battle. I don't have to sit here and find myself in the name of Jesus. I bind you, devil, because I didn't get that job. Hey, you know what? Save all your energy, folks. Save your energy and don't focus on the devil. Lift your eyes up and say, that's me up there. I've always been shining bright like a star in the heavens. It doesn't matter what I feel. Somebody, everybody will still see the light of the hope of God inside of me. I'm still shining. And I believe for thousands of years, guess what? You're still going to shine. No matter what you feel, you're still going to shine. So today, take that with you today. I want to encourage you right now. Go to our website. IdentityNetwork.net. In fact, you can tune into my brand new personal website, which is DrJeremyLopez.com. It's just DR, no period, just DrJeremyLopez.com. I have about 70 teaching CDs that we've done. In fact, the past six months, I've put out over 25 new ones. So I want to encourage you to go there. We have new CDs on fear. We have things on anxiety. We have things on living in the nowness of God. I have things on there about deep mysteries of God. We have our school the prophets. I want to encourage you, go on our website, go on my personal website and get what you need. In fact, did you know that on IdentityNetwork.net we are one of the world's largest prophetic resource websites? In fact, since last time we did our broadcast, we already have over 200 brand new ebooks from Destiny Image, from Chosen Books, so many other publishers out there. And we're counting every single day. So if you want to get your book downloaded instantly, go to IdentityNetwork.net. Hey look, God bless you. Have an amazing day today. Until our next broadcast, I want to encourage you today. Look up. Look up. Forget about the devil. Look up right now and know who you are, whose you are, and rest in that promise today. God bless you, and I'll talk to you soon.